Well, hello and welcome to EFAC Hi. Mini Me here, Super oh, Chat Catch Up, yeah. episode 253. Which Those one don't was remember. that? That's, that's where we tackled the question of Ratatouille and criticism oh, right. and stuff. Oh, right. Yeah, that's right. Oh, Ratatouille being good rat, yes. Ratatouille I don't think anybody was, uh, questioned yeah, that. Pretty that. Yeah, good. Um, but yeah, we got some messages we're going to check out, so... You know, no point in uh, delay, and we're just going to jump right in. Mola, tell us everything you know about Dragon Ball Z, please. I'm afraid I don't really know much at all about Dragon Ball Z. Oh, I'm, wow. Uh, I'm just not into it. I'm sorry. That? No, I don't think I will. I don't know anything okay. about Dragon Ball Z, really. Goku turns into a Super Saiyan, and then he punches um, Frieza. And yeah. He beats him up. Piccolo. Really... Really gives him, yeah. What was the uh, the green guy? I don't know shit about Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, yeah. There you go. We did it. That's most of it. Mm, yeah. Trunks has the sword. The little platoon. Is it true you haven't watched past episode three of Arcane? Because to put it shortly, you thought it was very good slash heavily enjoyed it, right? I have no mm. idea. I can't remember. Did we talk to him about that? I don't know, but he must answer for his crimes. Yeah, I mean, you know, as long as he gets around to it, you know, when maybe when there's less going on. Maybe when season two comes out, and then everyone says, hey, 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 you gotta watch season one first. You fool. Hey, you interrupted me watching EFAP 43, so I'd appreciate it if you put this on hold and any future FAPs until I'm caught up. Gosh, you guys, selfish. Yeah. Sorry about that. Hope you've made I'm it. Not. I mean, it happens. It's okay. It's all it's all about life, really. And if anything, you know, you can, you can just get to them when you can, you know. It's, it's all gonna work out. Yes, mm -hmm. you do. You guys, Cinematic Venom re-reviewed Lord of the Rings, and he likes it now. It's the redemption arc I didn't think was possible. Interesting. I hope it's not a Chris Duckman Blade Runner thing, and he actually does like it. I was going to say, for the yeah, record, it's fine so. to not like Lord of the Rings. It is. Yeah, it's okay, freak, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it is very strange, but it's you're entitled it's to fine. that perspective. Yeah. Um, hi, Rex. Hello. Can you read the Scott Steiner copy pastor in your skeletal voice? I never knew how badly I needed to hear your great skeletal voice again. The Scott Steiner copy pasta? That's what they said. Yeah, I'm not sure I know which one that is. Uh, Scott Steiner. Copy pasta. Scott Steiner math copy pasta. Why is this not safe? Oh, it's just probably just got naughty words. Oh my god. Okay. Um, what's this? Um, the Scott Standard Math Copy. Seven years ago. I've never even heard of this. You know, they say all men are created equal. But you look at me, and you look at Samoa Joe, and you can see that statement is not true. See, normally, if you go one-on-one... -on -one, oh, sorry, the mature content thing popped. Yes, I'm over 18. Why would you do that now? <laughs> Why would you do it now? Oh, they knew I was doing the voice. If you see me, normally if you go one-on-one -on -one with another wrestler, you got a 50-50 chance of winning. But I'm a genetic freak, and I'm not normal. So you got a 25% at best at beat me. And then you add Kurt Angle to the mix. You, the chances of winning drastic go down. See, the three-way at sacrifice, you got a 33 and one-third chance of winning. But I, I got a 66 two-thirds chance of winning. Because Kurt Angle knows he can't beat me, and he's not even gonna try. So, Samoa Joe, you take your 33 one-third chance minus my 25% chance, and you got an 8 one-third chance of winning at sacrifice. But then... You take my 75% chance of winning if we was to go one-on-one, -on -one, and then add 66 to third percent. I got a 141 to third chance of winning at sacrifice. Senior Joe, the numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you at sacrifice. Wow. Yeah, so, uh... I've never heard I... of that before. I've never heard of that before in my life. This is from r slash copy poster from seven years ago. Oh, well. Yeah. So who knows? Okay. I don't. Not me. I don't know. Not me. 
Oh, they, I think they got what they paid for. So there you go. I think so. Transaction complete. So. Yeah. Um, what soundtrack is better, Hot D or God of War Ragnarok? And this chatter says they choose Hot D. Um, I'd probably go with God of War Ragnarok, actually. Uh, I'm unfairly biased to Ragnarok. I almost know the fucking whole soundtrack at this point. Meanwhile, if I listen to Hot D's one several times over, maybe I'd feel differently, but yeah, Ragnarok for me. What about the other guy? Oh, uh, yeah, sorry, was, what was the question? <laughs> sorry, I was uh, drinking something there. Hot D or God of War Ragnarok, which has the better soundtrack? <laughs> I find that funny. I was drinking uh, something there before my ears stopped working, or what's yes, the... uh, pretty much. Yeah, it's basically. Um, I'll multitask. The problem is, I don't remember as much of the House of the Dragon soundtrack because sometimes that just happens. Sometimes you just don't remember some as much as the others. I will tentatively say Ragnarok, but I need to hear the House of the Dragon one kind of again to be certain. Mm -hmm. But uh, the the Ragnarok one has stuck with me a bit longer. But I will say that, um, uh, yeah, I just don't remember a lot of the House of the Dragon soundtrack. Maybe if I hear it again, it'll come, it'll come back to me, but who knows? Yeah. Uh, what did y'all think of Doctor Sleep? Um, I haven't seen it. Both haven't. Uh, I thought it was fine. Obviously, it's a Flanagan film, so I made sure to see it. It is a sequel to both the Kubrick film, but an adaptation I'm of the, the novel, book right? from Stephen King. Yeah. So it's complicated in terms of something that trying to string together two different continuity stories at once or something. It's, it's one of the most bizarre things to happen in history because it's actually um, an answer to a hypothetical that I had in my head, which it, it comes down to all that adaptation stuff. If you have three books, let's say, Fellowship, Two Towers, and Return of the King, and they're all beloved, someone makes an adaptation of Fellowship, and it is not faithful but it's really good. And then you are making the sequel. So to stick to either the unfaithful adaptation or the book means that you breach continuity in one way or the other. That's fun, isn't it? Mm. Kind of interesting. Um, and yeah, at that point, yeah. What's the correct answer? And I think a lot of people would say stick to the source, but, um, you know, I don't think anybody would have been able to get away with telling Kubrick that. He'd have been like, fuck off. I mean, it's true. He would have said that. Either that, or I am sticking to you know, it's interpretations and all that stuff. Um, but anyway, I thought it was fine. I didn't have much of a thought about it. I have several friends who did not like it, but funny enough, I was on a real BBC episode in which the guest said he loved Doctor Sleep as you know what it is, where it sits and stuff. And I was like, all right. Um, I'm not one to ask. Shining's not exactly all, all the books, even side of it, it, it. They're just not things I'm that familiar with, so I can't judge it on that way. But I mean. Sufficiently creepy and interesting in certain places. Um, I love Ratatouille, and I also love rats, so thank you for covering this. There you go. Oh, you bet. Yeah, rats mm -hmm. are great. We love an excuse to use, you know, a film that we're Talk all about a rats. fan of yeah. as a vehicle for something else. Like, if someone's got a video that's like, I have really bad modern opinions, also I'm covering Incredibles. You're like, oh, sweet, we'll watch Incredibles, and then we'll do this. Nice. Uh, did you guys see Chris Reagan indirectly accuse that Star Wars girl of being opposed to interracial marriage in his newest video? Uh, what? Is she opposed to inter... No, surely I would, not, right? I would put 99% bet on her not being against interracial marriage. Um, She's, yeah, that seems like that's just one of those things that isn't true at all. Oh, yeah. No, no idea about that, but you know, obviously it is a crazy world we live in. Uh, so they ended that with. Um, jam starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. God, I can't believe you said man. jam a man of fortune. One of the funniest quotes ever. It's, it yeah. might be. It might actually be one of the funniest quotes <laughs> ever. The man, we watched him. He, he learned about condensation on stream. He did. He did. He learned about the, the physical process of condensation. Do you the remember, Rags, when he I, lived it, he said, so water just appears out of nowhere. Water just, <laughs> yeah, he, like, he learned about it, but he still doesn't like, understand he, it. He still doesn't know He's, about water vapor. It, it would be like getting explained of gravity, and they'd be like, so stuff just goes down. Okay. Uh, 
And you're like, yeah. well, I mean, you could say that. Well, it was like, uh, not really. <laughs> um, that, no, that's not really how it works. Uh, it's not that it goes down, it goes in, really. It's mass anything. attracts mass. That's what uh, I'm saying. It's like he hasn't understood it at all. He's just understood the surface level and accepted, I guess, yeah. it's true. It just, it's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it, it kind of treats it like you would a sci-fi that's like, I've got a little gun here that shoots ha happiness in the form of a fucking rays of sunshine or something. You're just like, eh, okay. Fine. Uh, are you still considering having Solar Sands on to talk about art? Big fan of both of y'all. Yes. Good idea. It's a good idea. Because we did it. Oh. <laughs> um, yes, Dukes. Linguini didn't ask her for his consent. Movies are 2 out of 10. Exactly. Wow. Horrifying. True. He's a rapist. Jam a man who grew up surrounded by water, and water is a liquid. I grew up surrounded by water. Boba Baggins, yeah. Balboa Baggins. I think EFAP chat recommended Redline 2009, and I watched it, and it was really good. Fantastic animation. Thanks. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. I've never heard of Redline. Maybe some. Maybe I'm just not remembering it when someone brought it up. But I can't remember. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Is that like some one of them animes or something? Probably one of them animorums. I feel like I may mm. have heard of it, but uh, got nothing in the old memory banks. Uh, do you think the puppy in Apocalypse Now was permanently traumatized by being grabbed so violently? Poor little buddy. I don't know. I guess uh, for films made that long ago, animal safety wasn't as... Um... It was prioritized. <laughs> it was, it, did they, like... But it probably meant... But now I guess the flip side is more animals got work. Exactly. I guess you gotta take the good with the bad. When it comes Nowadays, to... Nowadays, um... all the animals are getting... Their jobs are getting replaced by CGI animals. Be asking how many... I kind of are. Yeah. That is true, yeah. And you should be asking whether or not the people got traumatized when making uh, Apocalypse Now. And the answer is probably yes for several. Mm. Uh, howdy, Mr. Eggs. Hello to you. Have you perhaps any new games to recommend to us? Perhaps also, Mall Gob is the remaster of DS Fine, or should I sniff out the uh, OG? As far as I'm aware, the remaster is pretty strong. Um... So, like, with the right mods, the original is a lot of... It's a whole complicated thing. You'd probably want to go to the subreddits to figure out what people have figured out at this point. Because I haven't played them since the remaster came out, so I'm not even sure exactly what place it sits in. But, yeah, uh, I, as far as I'm aware, the remaster is solid. As for game recommendations, um, you know what? We're getting to that point. My, uh, I had a friend who had a birthday uh, a couple of days ago. And so, like, there was, like, 13 of us, I think, at one point. The 13 of us got on uh, the Master Chief Collection, and we played Halo. Wow. And we were doing all sorts of custom games and crazy shit. So, if you guys haven't played Halo, you should do that. You should go through the campaigns of the first, I guess four, technically. Well, five. Uh, well, one, well, two, three. Five, or one, two, three, and Reach, and ODST. Yeah, which you should. One, two, three, ODST, and Reach, yes. Uh, go through those and play them. Because uh, they're really wonderful. They're really great campaigns, and the multiplayer is super fun. And we just oh. had a blast. We had a really good time. That's a real easy recommendation, because you're going to pay, what, like 20, 30 bucks? It's, I don't think it's ever sold at full price anymore. And you get, yeah, like five amazing games. And then also you get uh, Halo 4. Yeah. yeah, if you want to do something with it, it's there for you. Want, I mean, it's you there for you. Halo you know what it comes with, so, yeah. you know. That's neat. Uh, something to listen to while you work. Simpsons Writers Reunion on Conan's channel. That sounds like it'd be fun. Oh, oh that could be neat. Okay. That does sound interesting. Bonus. Honestly, yeah. Uh, I haven't seen much Simpsons, but what I have seen is well. Oh, really awesome. Rags, did you know that uh, good old Conan O'Brien was uh, he was one of the he was in the writers' room for the uh, early I think up to season three, maybe season four. He was in the writers' room. I did not know that. Yeah, it explains a lot, doesn't it? It is yeah, a definitive in. fun fact. Yes. Um, bonus... Yeah, it's only fun. That's right, it's an exclusively fun fact. Bonus recommendation, Emily Blunt and Brian Cox, they say 1v1, maybe they mean one-on-one, -on -one, as in, like, talking to each other one-on-one. -on -one. Discussion about the value of acting. Sounds like it could be the interesting. The value of acting. I wouldn't mind hearing from Brian Cox on that note, because he's oh, yeah, yeah, pretty of course. good. But then I call you know, Emily Blunt's good as well. I like her a lot. Yep. Um, Sonic's design slash concept aren't at fault in the slightest. Why has Sonic struggled? It's because Sonic Team is bad at making video games in general. Sega doesn't help either. Damn. 
Uh, I mean, I, I guess I'm inclined to agree that there's nothing, like, wrong with the Sonic formula. I mean, the formula as presented in the uh, early games on Genesis is pretty great. Um... Then again, I would say that, I don't know, I feel like Mario has always come across as, like, the more inherently approachable, kind of, uh, of the of the two games. Like, what, what Sonic is offering is kind of, like, Mario feels like the archetypal platformer, whereas Sonic doesn't feel like it's archetypal. It's kind of, like, it's, it's right next to it, but not quite, because it's going for a slightly different experience of, um, definitely much more of a, a, a leaning towards getting through the level really fast. Um, the whole multi-tiered kind of structure to each level, how you've got, like, a top a top path, a middle path, and a, a lower path, um, which is not usually the case in Mario. It's usually pretty straightforward. Um, basically, the point I'm saying is I think that, like, Sonic has a higher skill floor than Mario. Um, but yes, I'm inclined to agree as well that uh, there is nothing wrong with Sonic as a game. It's uh, It's just odd that they've not being able to be consistently good since, like, the first three fucking games. And ever since then, it's been way more of a, uh, a crapshoot. Uh, what is everyone on the cast's max bench? Lol, I listen to you guys all the time at the gym. Well, let me see. I've got... I've got a chair and another spare, but I don't have any benches. I think mm. there's one outside around the side of the building, but I never use it. I know there's I there's a lot of benches at like the parks and stuff that I go and walk on. I do my walks and stuff, but around but here I don't need a bench. It's if I want to lounge, I just lay on the bed, um, and I've got my computer desk and I have like another like older chair, but it's smaller. It's just sort of over there in the corner. But I don't I don't I don't my max bench is I guess zero. To, I I guess it's an odd question, but it's, I guess it's fair. I'm afraid I don't uh, have it recorded. I can't tell you. As in, like, I don't even remember the last time I did it, and I don't remember what it was, so... Nothing of interest to say on that one. Yeah, like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, found a neat animal discovered last year. Lamarac dromia? Lamarac dromia. Is that, like, a, a type of... Oh, I, I was about to say, is that a type of llama, but I guess not. The Mokdromia, maybe. Beagle is a fairy crab discovered in the made-up land of Australia. Interesting. What will they think of next? I don't know. They're kind of getting desperate, making up new animals. Didn't they want to just play with the ones they had? Like Disney. Oh, new force powers. Ooh. That'll Look fix everything. Original. Whoa. I saw a picture of him. Uh, interesting looking. Oh, wow. Look at that lad. Oh, look at him. Look at the... He's a furry boy. Look at him. He's a fuzzy lad. Look at him in his shell. Hmm. I assume that's a shell. Well, there you go. Um, so you discovered last year? That's cool. When I hear the name Anton, I think Anton Chigur from No Country for Old Men. No Country for Old Rat? Country Tui? No Cooking for Old Men? No Maybe. cooking for old man. <laughs> uh, Puss in Boots sounds painful, not gonna lie. Suppose it could be, depending on interpretation. I'm just thinking about, wouldn't it be interesting if Pixar got to make a film that was like an adult, like strictly for adults animated film that was like No Country for Old Men, but that would never happen. That would be interesting. You yeah, do wonder, like, cool. what would you make? <laughs> <laughs> Jam drawn man, Tony Starch. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Starch. Bonus quote: Jam Groot. Yeah. <laughs> Jam Groot. Jam Groot. Uh, howdy, Masters. I was the brood member who super chatted the new uh, nostalgic. Critic clip, I was surprised and deeply honored to have contributed to EFAP content, and on the anniversary, no less. Thank y'all for everything you do. Hi, Rags. Hello. Yes, that was the baffling clip where he said we have to put up with Lion King 2019s in order to oh, have man, the Mandalorian. No. The logic doesn't even make sense, and the fact that you're saying it in favor of an actual bad story. <laughs> it's so it's, funny. It's, it's, it's so weird as a quote. 
Um, yesterday was Mihai Chiksent Mihai's 89th birthday. How did y'all celebrate? You did celebrate, right? You wouldn't forget his birthday, would you? I had a cake and it was all middle. Yeah, it was great. No crust. Put all the candles in the middle as well. My new favorite movie, When Cheers May Come. All right. Instead of what dreams may come, yeah, I guess. Uh, can't think of CGI artist names. They must be bad. Oh no, you remember that? Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, none of that, all right. That triggered the hell out of me. <laughs> like, what a bad yeah, argument! Just, you don't remember the name. That, that's why you because don't they don't make good that things. The value of their creations. God, I'm just thinking of every last person in history who's just fucking like, excuse me, who like made great stuff but wasn't remembered for it. Yeah, poor exactly. Ugg, who invented the wheel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, poor Ugg. I agree, poor Ugg. He's just like, well, they, I mean... I, they so don't know Ugg's name, but Ugg okay. He, he, he was like, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> fine. It's, okay. it's fine it's they just don't remember my name, you know? I, it's more important that civilization moves forward and everything. And then it's like, yeah, but people who don't remember your name, that means that you didn't do something good. You'd be like, mm. oh, excuse me? I don't, I don't see... Yeah. Uh, hmm. There was a first guy who created the wheel. That guy exists. Just like there was a first guy who decided to drink cow's milk. <laughs> like, these you know the guy who made the same. wheel, do you think when they made it, he was like, hey, should I write my name down just to make sure everyone knows who did this? They're like, no, we'll remember. Oh, we all know you, Ugg. <laughs> yeah, we know you. Uh, everyone know you, Ugg. Would the wheel have been... Cr the wheel must have been created before writing. Yeah, almost certainly. Yeah? Mm -hmm. almost, I would say how, almost certainly, yeah. How long... Do, do we have any guess as at all as to Certainly when before... Was, uh, like a formalized writing, like marks on a wall, yeah, yeah. obviously, you know. Oh, yeah, of course, but like not, yeah, not, not like written language before they were, yeah. But, but I guess we don't, I guess we don't know then, uh, like when it was made. I, I wonder how much of a mind blowing thing it was, or if it was just the perfection of stuff they'd gradually been building up to, like just getting better and better and then realizing, oh, the rounded shape, that's probably the best one. There you go. Uh, I, I got to imagine that it was probably a hyper... Yeah. Yeah, maybe? You know what I mean? Like, they, they, they had different versions that were getting better and better until they were just like, yeah, you Until they realized... One the was just like, why yeah. do you just have it so it's lumpy? Why don't you just smooth it out? And then he was like, oh, fine, you smooth it out. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> I don't know why, out. but that's making me think... Do, do you, it was a joke in, uh... I remember it was a joke in Family Guy where it was, um... Oh, it was, uh... God damn it. Um, it was it was like a car crash and these two guys who one guy was eating peanut butter, one guy was eating chocolate, and when they crashed, they flew into each other. And the police officer got there and it's like, he got peanut butter on my chocolate. He yeah. got chocolate on my peanut butter. Is he that the ate origin it. of that? Is uh, family well, guy? The, the, so the, I, th well, I thought that was an old commercial. Well, so the joke is that that crash happens, the cop eats it, realizes it's so good, then whips out his gun and kills the two of them yeah. so that he can, so oh, that he can keep it for okay. himself. All right. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm thinking of that in terms of, like, a, a magical sort of happenstance of just stumbling on the wheel. That I don't know, like, this guy had a square wheel and a triangle wheel. And then whatever they crashed and it turned into a sphere, and then one of the cavemen <laughs> found out and killed them and stole their idea. But it probably didn't play out that way. Probably, but it's a fun thought. Uh, new Bethesda game sounds like it's time to play New Vegas again instead. Correct. Mm. Um, Rags' parents are Barkitects, meaning they are dog architects. You didn't need to explain it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I got it. I liked meaning it, and then you said what it was. they are dog architects. <laughs> you think they wrote it out, that they were like, oh shit, they might not get it. Which, to be I fair, we've not gotten there. things before, so I understand. It happens. It happens. <laughs> yeah, it might happen, you know. Sega should make Sonic brand chili. Because uh, he really chili likes dog. chili dog. Yeah, yeah, that's probably an idea. Something to put on the chili dog. I'm sure Sonic would probably like chili a lot. He just prefers chili dogs. Or maybe <sighs> when he goes out and gets chili dogs, it's just more... It just makes more sense to order chili dogs, not to be like, I would like some chili. Maybe he likes them. Uh, oh, well, no, it makes sense that he likes the mobile version of a food, right? Because he's I think Sonic. he just likes he fast food in general. Fast. What do you mean he likes fat? What do you mean? He likes fast... Oh my god, Rags. Architects. 
Yeah, that's it's 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 along those lines, Rags. Do you get it? I had a um, I got some fast food the other day. I went to a Popeyes because I watched a video on Popeyes. What is and, Popeyes? Like, we don't have that here. What oh, that? right, right, right. It's like a fast food chain here that does Louisiana style sort of food, so like fried chicken and biscuits and stuff like that. And I, and I watched a video on it and what their process is for getting new menu items and you know, stuff like that and how they expand. Mm. And so I was like, you know what? Every Friday, I pass a Popeye's twice there and back. And I've, I haven't been in many, many years. I'll give it a try. So I went to Popeye's and I had a chicken sandwich and it came with fries and a Coke. And it was nine fifty, almost 10 bucks. So it was a little pricey, you know, as fast food actually is. Turn, just to alleviate everyone's disillusion, should you possess it, fast food isn't actually cheap. It just tastes cheap, usually. But I had this fried chicken sandwich, and it was really good. Um, I was quite pleased with this chicken sandwich. So, yeah, good job, Popeyes. You make a good fried chicken sandwich. All right. It was I yummy. A good ham, as it were. Guess oh, not. No. That's okay. no. That's okay. Uh, I never liked how Udina became a straight-up traitor in Mass Effect 3. At first, it seemed like Mass Effect 3 was trying to make us sympathetic to him. I can't remember, honestly. I can't remember that character. I can. He was, the, he was, a, he was in the first Mass Effect. He was opposed to um, uh, Anderson. It was him and Anderson, basically. Right. You'd remember him if you saw him. Ooh. Don't worry. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, you would, you would. Um, I hope Boris He's Johnson's... talking with Shepard in the in the intro of Mass Effect One when they're talking about Shepard and they're doing the oh, voiceover. I didn't, I didn't play Mass Effect One. Oh, you didn't? No, because it wasn't. Oh. Uh, when I played Mass Effect Two and Three, Mass Effect One wasn't on PlayStation Three, which oh. is what I played it on. So okay, I played I gotcha. the I played I gotcha. the prequel comic that lets you make all of the important choices in your uh, so that like, instead of the default, which by the way. Default choices in Mass Effect 2 include that fucking Rex is dead. That is, is that is mind. actually, as much as I, Mass Effect 1 is my favorite. Um, but a big complaint, and it is a big complaint about that game, is that if you don't have basically Max Paragon by the time you get to Vermeer, Ra Rex dies. That's crazy. You, which is just That's like fucking insane. So I tell everyone, I don't, and, and maybe this will apply to you, I don't know, like, guys, please, you need to go max either Paragon or Renegade, probably you always Paragon. always go max one or the other, because if you don't, you get punished for it a lot. Basically, yes. Um, it's, it is my complaint of, a, of sort of Mass Effect in general. As much as I love the trilogy, and I really do, and I love those games, uh, there's so much to love about them. I don't like the Paragon Renegade system. It does sort of lock you into either going full one or full the other. There's no advantage or anything to gain from going sort of this, sort of that. Um, yep. So you basically you choose beforehand. Do I want to do a good? Do I do I want to do I want to do a Paragon or Renegade playthrough? So I tell people, go full. The, the whenever you can upgrade Paragon or Renegade, do that first, and then level up your other skills. Because Rex fucking dies if you don't. Which and is that crazy. Shit, there's got to be a mod crazy. to fix that. There almost is certainly a mod to fix that. I wonder if that is just a matter of them not realizing, oh shit, we might want to make it easy to keep Rex around seeing as he is one of the best characters in that whole series. Yeah, because he's, he's in characters. 2 prominently. Oh, well, not he prominently. He's, he's pretty important in 2. And he's oh, yeah. definitely in 3 too. And like, oh, I can't yeah. imagine playing 2 and 3 where he's dead. Well, I, can't, just imagine, I literally imagine, don't know what that's like. Imagine playing 3 without... The, the big payoff of Shepard will mean hero. You know, the word Shepard will mean hero. Well, yeah, Can you imagine like the whole Genophage on... stuff and Rex died yeah. in Mass Effect 1 because on a beach, Ashley was shot him, and I'm like... Oh, it's because Ashley sucks compared to... The human characters, man, there's so much... Yeah, no one the remembers the human hour. characters. No one remembers yeah. Caden. No one remembers Jacob. No one remembers Ashley. Everyone's like, yeah, fucking Rex, Garrus. Yeah, that's right. Rex, Garrus, yeah, Morden. Ollie, Morden, yeah. Liara, no one remembers a fucking human character because they're boring, dull pieces of shit. Ugh. They're just lame. They're lame. Um, fuck, marry, kill, all three to all three. All three to all three? I don't understand. Oh, all three of us to all three? Oh, we're not going to answer that. What are you doing? I'd, I'd marry the both of them, and I would yeah. start a polygamous cult with ourselves. 
And we would be the we would be the timekeepers. We'd be the time lizard people. I'd marry you both and then make a podcast. Robots, we'd be real. Mm -hmm. Goodfellas Ooh, or Casino? Cool. Which do you prefer? I haven't seen either. <laughs> I haven't seen either, actually. I'm yeah. sorry. I, I just remember haven't being... seen... Those are two that I haven't seen. There's plenty I like about both of them, so I'd have to give them a rewatch and then come down to a definitive answer. Hey, but there you go. There's an excuse to watch, watch them again, because... Yeah. You fellies. You guys should watch yeah. animation versus videos. They are amazing examples of how much you can do for character without using faces or voices. Hi, Rex. Hello. Yeah, I was, um... I forget what got me to, uh, to actually do it, but on a whim, perhaps, I watched... It's like eight years old now. I rewatched the Blizzard animation of The Last Bastion. Of Bastion yep. from Overwatch. And I was like, man, this is really fucking good. Like, this is it's like, this makes one. me cry. It's, it's the best one. It's definitely the best And it's the best so one. good. And it's Bastion. He doesn't have expressions. He's just, a, he's a robot. And he's got a light. And that, that's just it. You know, he's yep. le le he's less expressive than Wally -E in terms of yeah. like, what he can physically do to express himself. And that still is like a really, really wonderful story that's emotional. Oh, yeah. It's it, like so. I said, it, it's it's definitely the best one as far as I'm concerned. It ain't even close. That was a back in the day. I was a filthy bastion main. Uh, oh, wow. Where are you? I know. Yeah, there weren't many of us, but we were a fucking <laughs> force to be reckoned with. I find it hilarious that um in the if you watch like the first trailer for Overwatch, Bastion had a shield. I can't yeah, believe that that was Bastion part of their idea shield. of being balanced. Yeah, give him a shield. They were still <laughs> figuring him out. Now, yeah, the uh, the the iteration that I, I played with him in essentially before and after he his sort of mild rework, um, and it was it was uh it was it was neat. That game was kind of fun. I played like probably 250 or so hours of Overwatch, and then I was like, "Yeah." I realized that how much oh, no movement acceleration pissed me off, and I was like, "Oh, Genji, Genji's gonna press the kill you button and you die." I like, oh okay, well that, that gets pretty old pretty fucking quick, and then I just not a skill and issue then. It's not no, it's not a skill issue when Genji presses the kill everyone button and he does it. <laughs> it just gets kind of old the fifteenth time it happened. And you're like, "Oh okay, well." I sent some trauma here. No, it really wasn't. I mean, I did. I want to like Overwatch, but I feel like it doesn't try hard enough. Oh my god! To get me to like it. But I well, have now nobody likes it. Now no one gives a shit. Yeah. How interesting! It just sort of mm -hmm. off it goes. Here's an interesting quote. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it. I think they're for jam. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I like that. I think therefore jam. <laughs> I think Why did therefore he say jam. jam a man of fortune? And he didn't I even seem to notice it was a strange quote. Notice. Yeah. I think therefore <laughs> Henry jam. Henry Avery's 1964. <laughs> <laughs> God, I, I do think maybe the second funniest thing he ever did was getting on the ground and doing the worm when he talked to Ethan. You mean when he won the debate? Is that what you're talking <laughs> yeah, about? Yeah, that was when he won that the debate so for me. That was so good. Dude, that was too funny. The, that, the that sheer physicality funny. of him winning that debate. Expressed yeah. in dance. Well, you said in your <laughs> Q&A that you like Dragon Force. Is ZP Theat uh, or Mark Hudson better as a singer, not for the band? There's no question there. Considering... My knowledge of Dragon Force is more so cut off at around like 2012-ish. It was Valley of the Damned, Sonic Firestorm, Inhuman Rampage, Ultra Beat Down, and then I think Power Within is where I stopped listening. Maybe Maximum Overdrive, I can't remember, but that would mean that uh, would be, I was mostly listening to ZP's work, not Mark's, so that would be who I'd pick, but hey, maybe I'd have a different answer if I was to pit them together or something against each other outside of the songs. But uh, I'm not as familiar with Dragon Force as you probably are, so. Um, I'd love to see y'all talk about Armored Core 6 like you have other games. The story is interesting and your choices, what few you have, drastically change the outcome of each playthrough. Also, hi, Rex. Hello. You may have noticed Which? that the games we choose are usually ones that all of us were interested in before we even met anyway, as franchises. Usually, yeah. Um, 
Some well, except not. for Resident Evil Four, that was one that I basically that was prompted by the remake existing. Well, and I was gonna say, uh, Ragnarok is just that was like. You know, I <laughs> just like I had so much to talk about. I was so impressed by the story. I was like, "You guys got to see this." Uh, well, I say that. Uh, uh, you know, I wanted Fringy to play it because I figured he would uh, at least be somewhat interested. Anyway, um, yep. I forget your familiarity with God of War up to that point, but you. Um... Uh, I basically I wasn't I I I knew a bunch of stuff just basically through like you know being in, like playing video games. I was just aware of a decent amount of it, but yeah. I hadn't played him. You did 2018, and then you did Ragnarok, and it was real fun. Yes, that was a big old adventure. Um, hello, 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 and for added effect, hello. Ah, oh my god. Interesting. I'll use this chat, recommend some movies. Loving Vincent. That's been recommended before, actually. Road to El Dorado. There. Oh, I yeah. love the Road to El Dorado. Prince of Egypt Shell and Treasure Planet. Yep, yep. Love both of yep, those. Yep, we will um, say no is like him. This next one, uh, The Thing. That's fair, yeah. Right, Absolutely. Yeah, which, wait, wait, which one? 2011? Obviously, yeah. 2011. Wait, we're gonna assume. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's, <laughs> the one, yeah. I'm, I'm being, that's the one I'm, people I'm, love, so yeah. Easy A, which I've heard of, but I haven't seen. And, uh, Easy A? Is that the... Nine. Oh, the Elijah Wood was the, yeah. And then they just said bye. Nine. Fair enough. I haven't seen Nine, I haven't but I always wanted to. I have seen Nine as well. Yeah, I wouldn't mind taking a look at it, yeah. I have finally caught up. All EFAPs, minis, movies, etc. So everything on Moolah. Thank you for giving me nearly two years worth of content to listen to while I work. Love y'all. Also, hi, Rex. Hello. Well, don't worry. Plenty more pouring out every day. Powering. Media analysis content. Dun, dun, dun. We voted the little platoon as best guest and he hasn't watched Wally. Can we revoke our votes? Mm. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. They put you know, a little heart it's tempting. Too. It's tempting. We'll put it on pause until he sees it, and then you can have it back. Remember when Mass Effect 2 did its own Heart of Darkness for Jacob's loyalty mission? Jacob's loyalty I mission, yeah, was finding his father crash-landed on the, uh, the planet. And it was, yeah. like, I don't know. That's I just all we remember is the general premise. He has, like, a harem of women or something, and he's, yeah. All oh, the human characters are not great. No one remembers the human characters. Hey, Masters, have you seen or heard of the Crank movies? If not, I recommend reading the synopsis of the first. They're both hilariously entertaining. I would highly recommend them for a good laugh and a crazy movie. Perfect EFAP movie material. Also play Little Nightmares, High Ranks. Hello. I've seen both of them. They are wacky and fun. You guys seen both of the Cronks? No, I have not seen Crank or Crank 2 High Voltage. No, I haven't seen them either. You guys know, both know what it's about, I assume. I know what it's about. Those are like, them, right? they're like transporter or something. Crank, he has to give his heart rate up? Yeah. Right? Is that it? Okay. All right. Um, I think it's like he's he's going to die, but he can delay it if he charges up that heart more and more and more and more and more, and he's just trying to find the person who did it to him so he can kill him before he dies. That's like the, which is a pretty cool premise, I think. Um. Next. Imagine a talented team at Capcom or Devolver or Inti Create slash etc. working on good game mechanics for Sonic game. If Sonic Team was made up of talented game designers, it wouldn't be so dubious. Damn, mm, this oh person's got issues with Sonic Team. I really hate <laughs> Sonic Team. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I help support Moodle's video game addiction, and he can't even read my super chats correctly. Also, has it already Damn, been a year? Moodle. Time flies. Yeah, he's German though. That's, you know. Try not to mention it because it's so embarrassing, but. No, he tries. And yes, time be traveling. This one says Shrug, I'm the Slayer. Uh, if that's a, a Buffy quote, which it probably is, I'm not entirely sure. Sh I, I just don't know why you were prompted to say it unless it was something from... I just, I just, I'm just going to give her a thumbs up. Bringy, Sounds play good. Freedom Planet 1 and 2. You will like them. Uh, I've not heard of that series. Just want to say hi to Shady. When's the next Daria or TT video? Or Shady do rags? Shady do rags. I don't know. I don't know either. Look if up I the did, name. You know. Look up the name of Bob Saget's sister. Is it a is it a uh. goofball name or something? <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> okay. This is pretty good. <laughs> 
She's a very lovely. She's a nice lady. Maybe we should like, like anyone listen to this who wants to know, they have to search it up themselves. Do you think that's the... correct? Yeah. Yes. You say Bob Saget's sister, you'll get it. Then you'll you'll do a little yeah. giggle. Then life will be better. <laughs> because when you type Bob space S, it already like auto fills Bob Saget's sister. <laughs> Google's like, I know what you're doing. I know why you're here. Oh, for now your, now, like, now I'm thinking about the Tourette's guy. Bob Saget. Oh, Bob Saget. This... You guys remember Tourette's guy? Tourette's guy from. It's just Tourette's guy. It was it was a YouTube thing. Hmm. Oh, oh, did, did, no. Neither of you know about Tourette's guy. Oh man, this it's it, this is old school YouTube. This it is might like, be, yeah, it might be that YouTube. It was basically just a guy who was just freaking out, <laughs> like instead of saying harsh shit and swearing. It was funny. Bob Saget. Um, is he is he as funny as Melvin of the Melvin brother of the Joker? I mean, oh, I eventually saw that. What the. Fuck. Isn't that some what of the, the most cringy <laughs> shit, man? <laughs> Melvin, Melvin, brother, I'm the Joker. <laughs> it's, it's like, I think that's one of the best ways to introduce Nostalgia Critic to anyone. Melvin, Melvin. It's, it's just what you're in for. <laughs> Melvin, brother. Do you think we can watch that on, on uh, EFAP sometime? I don't know. Like, It's probably not copyrighted, right? You wouldn't want to copyright that. <laughs> they wouldn't want to stop the world from seeing <laughs> Melvin <Butter. laughs> Fuck, I'm dying. He thought it was so I'm funny. <laughs> there is there is a kind of insistence on some of his jokes that do, in a way, actually kind of make them funny. <laughs> because he insists on how funny they are. Yeah. Well, yeah, because he'd be maybe he'd be really happy to know how much laughter has come from it, and that's all he that's you. Know, he'd be like, "There you go, that's all I need." Because um, do you guys know about the Linkara running meme? No, <laughs> he's like, he's. We need to do like a channel or some episode where we go through all this lore because he um he does like fucking Power Rangers reviews or something, and he needed in in his skit he needed to get somewhere fast. And so he, like, has video from presumably a car, or it's just a road going real fast, full screen. He's green screen to himself, and he's mostly standing still, but, like, moving his arms almost like fucking T-1000 level and just running on the spot, you know? And then, like, slowly coming closer to the camera, like, staring into his soul. And that running meme is just used for everything. Including, by the way, I just saw this, uh, Linkara runs away from Melvin, brother of the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. The fucking running meme. <laughs> what are you doing? What the fuck is that? It's not running at all. But he thought it was. I feel like um he never <coughs> Nostalgia Critic never evolved. He never grew. He's stuck in that like 2007 yeah. YouTube, you know? And that's why that's why we love him. Top comments that Joaquin Phoenix based his Joker off Melvin. <laughs> <laughs> Melvin, Melvin. Oh, speaking of Joaquin what? Phoenix, we got to see a Napoleon when it comes out. Yeah. Um, do we? Do we? I want to see it, but do we got to see it? That's kind of the question. Yes. Oh, well, I mean, I don't know. Are you asking how how uh, how how hype are we? I I, I don't really know. like to I, see um, it because it's Napoleon and it's Joaquin Phoenix and it seems I like it's. Really thought. And it's Ridley Scott, Little so Riddles. there's like, and he's just you know he's banger after banger, so mm -hmm. yeah. I don't mean like he's abusive. I just mean that he, you know, makes really good films. He's never made a bad film in his life. That's true. And typically, the longer they are, the better they are. And these comments are so good. I used to think my life was a tragedy, and I realize it's a cringe <laughs> compilation. <laughs> it's a cringe <laughs> compilation. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> If I ever get to work at DC, I'm going to make Melvin Cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Melvin, the brother. It, in a way, he's kind of like the Star Wars prequels, where he's terrible, <laughs> but you, you kind of are endeared to it, in a way. Yeah, well, so it's post-anti-comedy masterworks, so no one can tell me otherwise. <laughs> Anti-comedy masterworks. <laughs> Shockingly accurate. It's, funny, it's actually it, scary. It was like... the. The stream after the EFAP episode I did talking about, like, explaining Melvin the Brother Joker, I had to explain it again on uh, 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 Star Wars Theories stream. Two chances to explain such incredible lore is, is, you know, no one can really claim to be so lucky. 
Um, the story of Aaron of Lincoln is interesting. Right. I hope Boris Johnson's barber wasn't in charge of his son's circumcision. Oh. Because Boris Johnson has an infamously bad hair do. What about if it's post-anti-comedy hair? I didn't think mm, about that, did you? And I guess it's good. Remember when Remember Biden rode past a pro-abortion rally and said, Keep going! He was actually talking to the bike. The bike? He was talking to the bike. I feel like there's a joke the bicycle? there. Bicycle? He speaks to the bicycle? Because he's old and he speaks to bicycles? If, that, if that's it, okay, fair enough. I get it, yeah, sure. Uh, did you hear about Cinematic Venom's new review of Lord of the Rings where he makes fun of his younger self covered on EFAP 93? I have heard. Uh, you need to check it out. Mr. Nice Guy Jackie's best film is set in Australia. React to it with meme. Play the Max Payne trilogy massive and play the Lucifer games for Halloween. My goodness, Sonya That's request. a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. I think Platoon is right. Ego does recognize that he was initially apprehensive to Gusteau's idea of anyone can cook. He still gave them a chance. Yeah, I think that that, that aspect of him is pretty interesting considering how he is, that's pre-arc, so to, that as anyone sees it, right? But he still does give people a, a shot at, you know, uh, impressing him. But, uh, you know, maybe he just cranked his standards so high only a rat could pass them. Particularly good rat, though. Mm. Hey, Fringy. Oh, hey. Ended every episode with gobbling noises. Isn't doing much service to your I am not a bird narrative. Uh, well, I don't... What what bird is there that goes... What, what bird makes that noise? Um, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm not familiar enough with birds, really, but I just, I just don't... You know, in all representations of bird in media, or birds in media, I, I don't... I mean, I don't know. I feel like if every if every episode I ended with caw -caw, then you'd probably have more of a point. Well, now they got it. Well, you're, you're yeah, gonna use that against only, you. Yeah, but only only that one. That's that's all they got. Maybe that was their master plan. They were just trying to get that out of you. Uh, maybe, yeah. Who knows? Um, I don't think it's a stretch to assume that Remy was focusing on dishes that the old lady he lived nearby would have favored. Well, there's the theory that uh, he got the recipe from the book that was in her house and that she is actually Anton Ego's mum. And that's where he grew up. Um, this is a fan theory that everyone very much loves and wishes to be true. I find the um, the idea that he made a peasant's dish kind of more meaningful, you know, in Absolutely. general. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, gotta go, Mola. We'll catch up later. Don't let the autism rub off and have a fantastic day. Also, hi, Fringy. Hey. Oh, this reminds me of the time my now dead sister force fed me worms. Five stars. Nice. Oh, are they talking about like if it if it related to some trauma? Yeah, that'd be unfortunate. Um I hate when people get the rat's name wrong. He's not Ratatouille, it's Ratatouille's monster. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I like that. That's a good joke. Uh -huh. Black Ops versus Black Ops 2 story debate, go. Um, I don't know. Are either of you guys even passionate about? I don't know I don't know anything um, about it, and I have no passion for. I was it quite disorder. fond of the first one. Uh, I don't remember the second one. Uh, oh. I like both of them. Um, I like I, I, Black Ops Two for me is like the last Call of Duty game that I think is like worthwhile. Basically, like th that I consider to be wholly worthwhile compared to like Modern Warfare 2019, where there's like a big asterisk on any recommendation. Oh. I can't um, believe that we're a, if you said Modern Warfare 3, we'd be like, yeah, which one? Oh, uh, yeah, well, yeah, Insane, exactly. Man. On the, 20, the 20th anniversary, Modern Warfare 3, I think the worst reviewed Call of Duty game. Um, I think so, like, yeah. Which, mm. which, yeah, isn't surprising based on it. But, but basically, the takeaway is that um, Black Ops is, like, really cool. Black Ops 2 is a bit more ambitious and in, in ways a little bit more uh, messy, but it also... both. Of, I think both of them have, like, the strongest campaigns... And then if you add World at War in the mix, like, Treyarch made good campaigns back in the day. Um, Black Ops 2 was, like, interesting in terms of, like, some of the, the concepts that it's trying to explore. And Raul Menendez is a... <laughs> one of the few Call of Duty characters that I think you could actually earnestly describe as interesting. Um, More and, interesting uh, than really Ghost? Like... Ghost is cool, uh, but obviously... Yes. You know, <laughs> but, I mean, I, I mean, I, uh... Hudson, like, yeah, I... 
I really like Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2. I think those are really cool campaigns. I think that they're fun. I like the twists and turns, and I like the, uh, I like all of the... I like, I like Mason screaming all the time. That's really funny. I keep hearing the fucking numbers! That's just, that's, that's funny, right? And also, I mean, it was kind of like a cool idea, right, of the, the whole, like, the post-credit reveal is that maybe Mason assassinated JFK as, like, a thing that they had been, like, teasing throughout the, uh, throughout the game. That was, like, kind of interesting. Hmm. Um, yeah. I, I could probably deliver a more comprehensive and, like, cohesive, uh, statements about those games. But, yes, I, I like them both. I think I'm a little bit, I'm more partial to Black Ops 1, but I think that 2 is pretty good as well in terms of their campaigns and, and story. Uh, and I like the Black Ops 2, actually. I find it hilarious that Black Ops 2 had more meaningful choices than Mass Effect 3 in terms of its ending. Like, Black Ops mm. Black Ops 2 had, like, four or five endings, I think, um, <laughs> that actually stem from choices you make. Whereas, unfortunately, Mass Effect 3, all of your choices ultimately lead to the same final choice anyway. Um, God, do you remember how fucking angry everybody was? Everyone was pissed. It was like, there were... It was maybe was it the first time that had ever really happened? Uh, of when like the ending was so bad, there was like a mass way. call for them to literally go back and redo it, like make yeah. DLC that uncanonizes what we got and make a real proper ending. Because I remember that I just felt like I was so upset when I finished Mass Effect Three. I was just fucking like Jesus Christ! This is what it all led to. I was, uh, I think I, I was perplexed. I was baffled because I, I, when I beat the game, I'd been playing it for like 10 straight hours because I was really, yeah, I was, I was having a good time. And then I got to the end game, and yeah. I was, I was kind of like, I was kind of, I, I, I just didn't know what to make of it. I was like, I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> like, why? It why was I, when, when I they had explained it. everything that happened, like, it was the state of the universe with the relays and, Every, you know all the planets and everything getting separated and cut off from one another i was like wow you took everything that was cool about this universe and you just like you literally just like undid it well it's just they completely they, they wrote an ending where no matter what you do everything is awful yeah like, everything's no shit what choice you make, everybody is now stranded in the star system that they're in and earth in particular is a destroyed planet with a massive fleet of comprised of all of the different aliens of the entire galaxy stranded there the crew of the normandy is stranded somewhere because they decided to flee from the battle <laughs> like and, and, and it's just like uh, yeah like and, and then of course the fact that like the premise of the game itself in terms of like like the explanation for why the reapers was doing anything at all was just like dude this is this is contradictory this is inherently contradictory if we if the if the organics create synthetics, they'll wipe out the organics. Therefore, us the synthetics will wipe out the organics. Like, okay, God, that that was a terrible ending. Um, and you know they did the what did they was it the director's cut right? That was the uh, that was the DLC. I wanna and it, something. I I don't think I ever actually played it. Uh, I never played it either because I was just like, oh, whatever. Like, a, yeah, you know, it's like, whatever. I think that was kind of my attitude. I was just like, nah, I'm done. I'm just, I and just. The problem is that it didn't change it fun. All it did, what it did was it presented a fourth choice where you could basically tell the Reapers, um, fuck you, I'm not doing any of your choices. Um, which I guess it's nice that that's an option there, but it still had the three choices. And then it had, it had like a post credit kind of like montage to be like, no, 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 everything's fine. They're rebuilding the relays. It's all good, you know, the, 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 the galaxy is, like, moving on to try and give you some closure. But it's still still not good enough. It's, it's still a pretty bad ending. Pretty awful, yep. Mm -hmm. mm. But a lot of good stuff along the way, thankfully. And it was a fun game to actually play. And there was some good stuff in there. Um, Mass Effect yeah, 3 Mass overall, it's, it's, it's a good game, you know? And a yeah. lot of great payoffs, but boy. More than, more that than end, death. But yes, Ooh, the ending. Highlight. You know? Mm -hmm. My favorite one-eyed character is the Lego Shumagorath we got from Multiverse of Madness. The only good thing to come from that movie. I mean, yeah, that could be pretty cool. Hiya, folks. Have you ever come across a piece of media where you think the writing is good, but you disagree with its messages? 
Ratatouille, sort of. Sort of, yeah. Just mainly Some of them one aspect of it, that's all. Yeah. I I very much agree with some things. And honestly, right after, yeah, so some of it. Kind of yeah. funny because I feel like the movie. That's why I keep suggesting Ratatouille Two would probably tackle this. I feel like it really naturally leads there, because the film is almost got it. You know, like the the creative yeah. aspects and stuff, and then being like, I am a pitiful reviewer though, so it can't come from that. Even though that's how the message is delivered. So it's like, come on guys, one more step. Nearly there. Almost got it. Sequel would be perfect for that. Is that that might be the more interesting question? Do you consider it like a flaw of a film if they deliberately have an incomplete sort of idea because they want it explored in like the next thing? Um, uh... probably not, but maybe it depends on what we get. If it's contradictory without that sort of context or explanation, then I think it probably would be. You know, like um, uh, as crazy as it sounds, but just like you know, there's someone who's done something pretty horrific, but done good things otherwise, and everyone's celebrating them, and we're like, "What the fuck? How did everyone let that go like slide by?" And then in the sequel, like characters start to actually poke at it, and then it actually comes through. It's like I, I think in that context, it still wouldn't redeem the first one if it was just out of character for everyone to be ignoring it. Um, you know, like uh, what happened in the prison in Black Widow, right? Like. If in, like, a future Black Widow film she hadn't died, they were like, you know, that prison thing. Like, there's some villain that's uh, well, like, you buried us in like... snow! Well, I guess the interesting thing is that it was not planned, but obviously Age of Ultron, its problems are incorporated into Civil War in a way yeah. that benefits Civil War, but it wasn't, it wasn't planned. It wasn't deliberately, intentionally written badly. When... Or, like, open-ended, this you know, is the... The math I would do, I believe that is a boon to Civil War, that it overall heals the MCU, but it doesn't actually change anything about Age of Ultron. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty much the way to, to put it. Yeah. Uh, what is the crew's opinion on 2004's Collateral? Have I haven't seen it. seen it. I think I haven't seen it, and I know that it's quite well liked, so that's one for us all to see at some point. Oft times, it's good to get the perspective of a brand new guy to the job over how you do things. They could have insights that you've never even thought of due to not being influenced by the nature of the job and how it works. True. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's not pretend the critic is good after finding out it was made by the rat. The worst thing you can have, he's not reliable at all if you want to be real. W sorry, what? Not like Don't there's not enough quite. commas in here. There's no commas on here or full stops. I mean, if you're talking, remember, you got to remember that like it's it is a cartoon world where like there are sentient moving around, walking, talking rats that can like wash their hands and stuff. I don't know. Is the point that they're making like that even even if you found out it was a rat, that would actually change your perspective on the meal completely? That it wouldn't. I'm not Sorry, sure. Can you read it again? Well, I'll post you it because um, I'm yeah. reading it over and I'm trying to figure out exactly what you're saying. Okay. Um... Let's not pretend the critic is good. After finding out it was made by a rat, the worst thing you can have, he's not reliable at all if you want to be real. Oh, right, what? That the critic isn't good because he wrote a good review of the place even though it was made by a rat? I guess so. Um, uh, well, what do you mean? He'd be judging the meal for what it was. Is that the criticism that he's right? he should be... Well, like, that's just a breach of uh, ethics, no matter what, that a rat is cooking the food. Uh, I mean, the problem is, I don't know what happens when you encounter a rat that's sentient, basically sentient, who can, like, essentially do, like, who washes his hands when he cooks, you know? Well, and like, um, he, I believe he has the reassurance of the other chefs that he's clean. He's not disease-ridden. I mean, pretty much, yeah. Like, he, yeah. And, and, and I mean, it depends on how much how realistic the world itself actually... Because, I mean, that, you can have a conversation about that of, like, are there other sentient animals that live in this world? Um, but, I mean, it's it's got a limited scope by design, partially so that you don't ask those types of questions. Um, but, you, I, mean, yeah, I guess you just, if I was to say as a defense that, you know, Anton decided that he wouldn't uh, fuck over the entire place by highlighting that instead, just saying that the chef is doing great work. But and then the, it made this... him think person i guess is saying that's that that makes him a shitty critic because he should be exposing person. something like that i don't even know if he mm. should it's complicated if, yeah, because... if he got his assurances then i don't think uh, yeah. and it got exposed anyway had it cost well they him, we so don't get to see their conversation Skinner, yeah, but Skinner, presumably yeah. one of the things he would have asked extensively about is like that's a fucking rat 
Um, well, or, no, remember, he didn't say anything. He, um, do you remember? Oh, yeah, well, so they, does he talk to the chefs at all, though? Uh, well, they, no, they show him around, but he doesn't say anything, and then he, he says... He just, the occasional question yeah. is apparently all that he... Uh, oh, the says. occasional question, that's right, yeah. I think the implication is meant to be that he was, like, so stunned that any occasional question was not that confrontational. It was like a clarifying Oh, yeah, sorry, I, I didn't... I didn't mean like you actually swear or anything. <laughs> I just meant that. <laughs> That's a uh, fucking rat. <laughs> uh, I would imagine cleanliness would have been one of the clarifying things. The, oh. You know, yeah, but like, I mean, he ate it. He probably. You know what I mean? Like, th there's a lot going into it, but I can understand wanting to clarify on that, I guess. Yeah. Uh, you see this, Remy? This is what happens to us critters when we run into humans. They make us crispy. Oh, no. Oh. It won't die. Um, just watch The Faculty, and it's better than 90% of recent movies, despite it being a cheesy 90s horror flick. Setups are paid off, foreshadowing is logical, and characters act consistently to the way they are portrayed. True! Yeah, the Faculty is good, Rat. Good. Was good that movie. our, um, our favor of that the body our... swapping? No, not body. Yes. Like, like, sorry. My favorite. Body snatches. Uh, yeah. It was, if, my, if, it was if, my favorite. It was, yeah. it was if we're discounting the thing, because uh, it's not quite oh, the no, same no, no, thing. No, no, no. Yeah, no, 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 no way. It's obviously, yeah. The faculty is much more in line with body snatches type stuff than the thing is. You know? mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, hey guys, criticism is definitely an art form. How many times do actors receive criticism from the director? It's the same skill set as a film <laughs> critic. <gasps> yep. Bum, bum, bum. That's interesting to think about, isn't it? I think that a lot of people want to be like a critic and a director. Like there isn't any crossover and you're delusional if you think one leads to the other. But at the same time, we all acknowledge that there is crossover. You have to accept that there is, yeah. A shilling for the critical meter. Don't go over. Fair enough. Oh, no, no, no. Five Nights at Freddy's now requires you to read 20 god-awful YA novels in order to keep up with the game's already incoherent story. Thought you might find that amusing. Yeah, well, I'm... I, I don't know anything about the lore. Yeah, I don't know shit about Five Nights at Freddy's. All I know is, yeah, it's complicated. There's stuff going on all over the place. They have... Maybe it'll be a, a horde of animatronic robots taking over the world eventually. In that universe. And then we'll make a film about it when they get to, like, the 10th one or something. Um, under criticism of Dunkey is exactly why his content sucks now and why he's become very disingenuous, petty, and just a jackass to his viewers. I wouldn't know. Um, I only know about bits and bobs of some of his worst stuff. I just, I got put off watching him significantly many years ago, so... You dumbos should over-criticize DDLC, or just criticize it the amount you usually do. Either way, you'll have to play it first to do that, so... Someday, maybe someday. I think you've been asking us to play it for like three years. It was it was just after Hardcore Henry, I think, that started getting asked. Once we watched it, I mean. Remember that, Rags? That was a fun movie. Hardcore Henry was neat. It was alright, yeah, it was alright. It's, it's a fun movie. Uh, John Locke's first of his two treaties of civil government was a written critique of Robert Filmer's Patriarcha? Patriarcha? In the style of EFAB. Uh, okay, cool. I guess that makes him a critic. And a writer. A game Udithal, critic. An artist. Uh, have you guys seen the Japanese McDonald's commercial? Wholesome, but also a nice anime. Yeah, I saw, yeah, really I've cool, seen the art. Uh, it's really, really lovely. Cool yeah. And yes, yeah. Uh, all you critics criticizing poor Sniper Wolf. <laughs> yeah. Poor, um. Poor uh, yeah. Wolf. Hi, Rags. Hello. Could I get a horror recommendation from each of you, excluding The Thing, Alien, Predator, and The Descent? Uh, underwater. I'll go with it. Follows. Uh. Saw. What? <laughs> <laughs> he said yeah. horror, not comedy. Yeah, but all right. <laughs> uh, Mola, did you see the new Ahsoka? It was amazing. Anakin was there. He had the eyes and a lightsaber. It did the red, and then he Vader, and Rex was there. Mola, these are things I recognize. Wow. Well, I hope you're okay. I, I don't want to get mm. overblown by all those things, and uh, hopefully we'll get some more of it in season two. You know? Another whole episode of Go Into the Past. It'd be super interesting, I'm sure. If there is a season two. We shall see. Heard the new Death album yet? Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the new no. Death album? No. Sounds scary, though. 
I think it was a horror movie. Yeah. Uh, there are no bricks and stones. I don't know any stones. horror albums, so I couldn't make any recommendations about those. There are no bricks and stones. Everything is made of Adobe or CGI. Adobe or CGI, the two <laughs> genders. Thoughts on Mario Wonder so far? I'm mixed because of the annoying SpaghettiO plants and other things that look too much of a departure. Also, high rags. Hello. Oh, well, I, think, I think it's... I think it's great. Um, I'm I'm a big fan. Uh, it feels like instead of what the new Super Mario Brothers games were, which felt like a very safe, um, a very safe sort of interpretation of Mario and a safe version of like a 2D Mario game, Super Mario Brothers Wonder feels like a meaningful uh, evolution and uh, exper like a meaningful evolution of 2D Mario with a lot of variety and a lot of experimentation. That's super welcome. It's just brimming with new stuff. Um, and on top of a really polished core experience, so I'm a big fan. I, I think it's great. There you go. Uh, criticism isn't art idea is probably partly because criticism is inherently a response, not something that can exist on its own, alone, in a vacuum. Is that true? Can we not be... Is, I... it, aren't a lot of stories critical of human nature? Human hmm. nature has to exist. Yeah. The whole idea with th um, a lot of I think like... it's in I think it is inherently responsive, but I don't think that makes it any less art. Yeah. I, I I don't know. I just feel like most stories are the individual's response to something. Like, isn't part of what we advocate that like better art is created by better experiences from a person, as in if they live a full life or they live a, a you know a yeah, life that has... exist, like the art doesn't come from nowhere. It doesn't exist in a vacuum. It's why people like believe there is just a an obvious difference between art made by humans and AI is that the humans have lived lives, and so you can you can feel the soul in there, for lack of better terms. Um, yeah. Obviously, AI can trick, but the a lot of it feels, and and this goes for like the the stuff like special effects from modern Disney stuff. That so much of it is so quickly done, so automated, and artwork that is made with like a passion, but put in places it was never meant to be, and so it like almost comes across as just slapped in, and then it starts to feel like it's soulless. I guess what I'm getting at is, of course, yes, uh, most of what people seem to do with the best of art is, you know, like, the thing. It's like, what is it about? It's like, if someone said paranoia, and be like, what does that mean? It's like, well, it's, it's kind of like highlighting one of the f flaws of human nature, or rather one of the defenses we have, maybe, or uh, point being a response to the concept. And it's like, ah, yeah. well, is it truly art now? And it's like, well, yeah, of course. Of course. Oh my god, EFAP movie Wally with Lil Platoon right now, please. Hi, Rags. Hello. Um, I mean, that'd be a film where if he was watching it for the first time, I wouldn't want him to talk over it. <laughs> I'd just be like, yeah. just enjoy it. Wally is brilliant. Inconsistency arises due to the speed at which the axiom can travel at and anti gravity. The necessary technological level implies Earth's crisis could have been solved. Uh, does it? I would probably need further explanation, but maybe it's something I could buy as an argument. I'm not sure. Maybe if I if I'd have to look into it and really think about it, but I mean, like maybe, but I don't know. Uh, well, because isn't when we catch up with them, they are able to go back to Earth at that point, right? Oh um, well, I think he's saying that they'd be able to fix the problem with technology. They wouldn't even need to wait for uh, they wouldn't need to wait for Earth to recover to that point. That they would have sufficient technology to just mm. fix the problem. But I don't know about that. I don't know if I would just assume that that's the case. Yeah, it could be complicated. Um, I have a feeling this creator of this video thinks Jackson Pollock is amazing. He might do. Um, and I'm totally fine with people finding Jackson Pollock stuff like <laughs> super interesting. It's not really the point. It's, it's more to do interesting, with, like... like sure. Like I get it. I don't blame anyone for finding it interesting. There are elements of being. I don't know, there, there are elements of it that, you know, do make you think. Uh, mostly for me, it comes in the meta of, like, wow, people pay that much for this, or, you know, that kind of thing, because I'm, I'm really not a Pollock fan at all. But, I mean, there's something to Shocking. talk about. Yeah. Uh, hey, Masters, I've been considering watching The Simpsons, because I sort of missed out on it. What season should I stop watching at? Also, what order should I watch Buffy and Angel? Thanks, and hi, Rags. Hello! Uh, I mean, me and keep going for a while. Yeah, me and Freaking Vance this before is Simpsons is kind of it, this is one of the only shows this applies to drop off when you want to drop off. Um, Pretty much once you once you start feel like it's not worth your time, but you might find that when you start to feel it's not worth your time, you're like at season fifteen, sixteen, 
Yeah, I was going to say, post season nine is where you will naturally drop off somewhere after yes. that. Somewhere after that. But if you dropped off in season seven, I would be fucking blown away. I don't even see how that's possible. We'd be like, yeah, I'm done. Like, that would, that would blow my mind. Or if you dropped off at, like, season four or something. And as for a Buffy Angel viewing order, there's a post that I use on, uh, called, like, the Watchers. Hang on, I'll just read out. I did this on stream once when someone wanted to know what it was. It's okay. the URL is jossweden.blogspot.com forward slash 2012 forward slash 04 forward slash Buffy dash angel dash Buffy dash and dash angel dash episode dash viewing dash order dot HTML. That will take oh you directly to the viewing order. Oh, directly to it. Yeah, I mean, that's what they want. <laughs> so, it's kind of funny to say directly after reading such a big URL. <laughs> Uh, I drop in right at the end and see a new rags with breasts. Glad I stopped by. Always nice to see a new piece of art by Baywin. Yeah, Baywin's, uh, Baywin is definitely, he's got a style. He's very talented. Makes he, the beautiful he likes, he, like, he knows what he likes. What can I say? Yeah. He knows what he likes. And with that, the last message. So thank you all for joining oh, wow. us. Appreciate the messages, the kind donations. We shall see you next time. Whatever it may be. Yeah. Bye-bye. Right. We'll see everyone later. Thanks again. Bye-bye.